Hello guys, just Goron here and welcome back to a new episode of Building Bakes Bergen. This is episode 5 and in this episode we will be working on the second primate house. Um, in the last episode we kind of put this building here in the right position to give us a reference point of where exactly that is. And in this episode we're kind of building the moats and the kind of terrain and pathing around the primate house. So that in the next episode we can, well maybe not the next episode, but in a future episode we can work on the details of the habitats and the house itself. Because it does have to be rebuilt. Um, when we copied it over I thought it would be just a case of recoloring it. And that, bam, there's the new primate house. But as it turns out there's actually a lot of, um, a lot of, stuff different about this primate house compared to the other one um, both in the shape and size and uh, of course it does feature three uh, monkey habitats uh, one of which at the back is actually more of a like temporary um habitat for i don't think it's mandrills i think it's baboons that they have um in the real zoo of course here we'll put in mandrills <laughs> because it's the closest thing we got um, but a lot of this episode is mainly just kind of screwing around with pathing and terrain to get that exactly right and building a bridge. <laughs> so I kind of want to take this time to talk about uh, my thought process and some other things regarding the park. Um, mainly uh, in response to last episode where we had to compromise some things regarding the scaling of the park because of some choices I made early on and it kind of got me thinking like what are my priorities with this park and what I kind of concluded is that I have uh, kind of a, a ranking of, of what I find important and at the top of that list uh, so at number one we have putting things in the right place so making sure that paths follow the same route, that buildings are in the right spot, and things like that. It's why I spent two hours after episode three uh, fixing the entrance, <laughs> because it wasn't exactly in the right spot, and it caused me to have to redo all the pathing and, and all things like that. Um, but it was worth it, because that's like a top priority for me. Um, and that is why I hated having to make the compromise we did in the last episode because it means we, we don't get to put the parking lot and the lemur exhibit in the right place. So uh, the compromise I made is good because keeping only that small part um, wrong and the rest of the park on grid uh, means that most of the park is in the right place but yeah preferably everything is so that's why i'm a bit upset <laughs> then uh, at the second place so the second priority um is making things look like the real thing to the best of my ability of course there's only so much you can do in this game um, and what you can do is a lot but there's always limits <laughs> um but yeah that's that's the second thing it kind of speaks for itself really uh, but it's it's mainly kind of in the interest of, of, of putting these against each other right so when you have to make a choice i have to consider these five things uh, the third of which is making it functional um, and kind of the, these last three are kind of more equal to each other than an actual ranking but i do make compromises often in the favor of this one uh, the sa same thing will happen in this episode actually with the thing we're building right now these stairs and what i mean by making it functional is uh, making sure that animals can use stuff making sure that people can use things and especially the latter is a bit more difficult in this game um, but you can make people use stuff for example what i'm doing over there and what i'll be doing for probably the next like minute or something of the time lapse which uh, well probably more than a minute honestly i spend a long time doing this 
and uh, as you know, the time lapse is uh, 16 times sped up. So, um, but over here we are messing with this terrain until I can actually get a very thin path leading up there, and that is because I want this uh, staircase to be functional. Uh, I want people to be able to walk up and down this staircase. Um, because I really, really like that about this game. I like making stuff not only that look good, but stuff that you can actually see people walk around in and see, even even if they glitch through walls, even if, if stuff like that happens. I really like seeing people in the game interact with the things I built. So that's also with one of the restaurants uh, I showed in the first episode. You can see people walk around, sit on the benches, enter and exit the restaurant, and that really makes me happy <laughs> to see that all in action. So, yeah, that's that's point three. Um, and then point four and five are, are pretty much on the exact same spot. Um, so making things functional is, is a bit higher than these, but these are pretty much equal. It's, it's making the animal welfare good and making things um, look good. <laughs> so there's, there's making things look like the real thing um, and there's making things look detailed and pretty um, which over here there's some compromising um, because the path is thicker than the staircase so I could have just made the, the staircase a bit thicker um, but that wouldn't look like the real thing because it is a very thin staircase. So instead I end up um, trying to hide the path with some stuff uh, which doesn't look very good and then I put these two bushes there that you just saw um, and that looks alright. So that's where I'm, I'm gonna keep that and it's kind of you know weighing against these five things like yeah I think this is the solution that uh, suits those five things best and I if I would have had these things from the start man I would have planned the entire zoo differently probably uh, well we at least wouldn't have made the compromise we did <laughs> in the last episode um, but there's no going back from that which is kind of a shame but we'll have to live with it <laughs> um, but now moving forward I'll definitely be thinking about these five things for every thing we make and I think that's a, a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Have have some criterion, uh, criteria to weigh your choices against and, and, and make decisions based upon. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. So let's focus on this part, which is a big old bridge, which is pretty much the only thing that we really managed to get done this episode, uh, other than the, the big stare thing um, but yeah this is a lot of messing around um, until I decide I'm just doing this completely wrong let's make some reference stuff and get this thing where we want it and I'm not sure what I'm doing over there uh, I feel like I realized that the pathing was off and now we kind of have the shape of the bridge laid out in these plaster pieces. And we can actually put down the bridge itself using path. And try to connect these up in a way that give us the shape of bridge I want. Which is this. And now it's just a case of detailing this bridge with some wood pieces. Uh, so we grab a bunch of different wood pieces. And move them into place and now I'm grabbing this little guy I had him standing on the I didn't actually mention that I had him stand on the um, the little stair that we made earlier to kind of <laughs> make sure it works uh, but here I realized I'm doing this wrong uh, I should use this type of wood uh, the other type of wood was was good and everything but this one was just slightly better for what we wanted to do it also has a one meter long piece which is fantastic for what we were trying to accomplish here so I could really 
get this thing the shape we wanted it and now I am um, and this is the thing that I am getting better at <laughs> and it's it's not I, I don't know how to explain it really but it's something I, I I'm pretty good at in general I believe I just have to apply it more often but it's finding a workflow um, it's not doing every little thing piece by piece uh, one at a time it's doing things sequentially basically in a way that um, allows you to kind of speed up the process so don't do one thing at a time but do a bunch of things that are all the same thing such as uh, as you could see copying and rotating a lot of beams in place and then later you can come in and move them all into place but you don't have to copy beam move copy beam move because if you just do copy beam copy beam copy beam copy beam move 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 it's a lot quicker than if you do it one at a time so <laughs> this uh, this kind of speeds up small things um, and if I get better at it it will hopefully result in me being a bit more efficient with my time because I still spend a lot of time just barely predicting at all. I mean this episode is a wonderful example of that because it is four hours and we managed to build a bridge and a little thing. <laughs> um, but yeah I just put some temporary pathing there uh, so that the guy could walk. <laughs> and now we make these little concrete steps that are underneath every bridge in the zoo and I don't think the scale is exactly right but it looks fine and I'm actually pretty freaking happy with how it ends up and yeah I use um, colored plaster uh, kind of colored into the same color as the concrete to cover up the steps and over there we just drop it down um, in real life this is made out of bricks and not really concrete. Well, I guess it's concrete bricks. So we don't really have the brick pattern, but I think it looks pretty great. And I'm just putting them in to every bridge that we have. And we'll detail all of those at the later point. But I just wanted to get them in and see what they looked like. Because uh, that's kind of like the one detail that was missing from um, the walkways up to that point. Other than the fact that there has to be fences next to them for the animals that are still going to be in and um, the bridges still need railings and there's trash cans uh, around them as well but yeah this is the point where I was like you know I want to test out this monkey house or primate house so let's just get everything in um, uh, well I wanted to test the moats basically so I'm just putting in all the habitat barriers and getting um, kind of a temporary setup but probably the doors and habitats will stay roughly the same because the size of the building is about right it just needs a bit more um, a bit more other stuff basically but of course the monkeys could escape because of the grid we had that problem in the last monkey house as well but now it is all good and we can start kind of shifting some barriers around and now I just wanted to put down some temporary stuff to keep the monkeys happy and uh, this monkey habit uh, monkey primate house thing <laughs> uh, features gorillas uh, chimpanzees just like the other one but as I mentioned it also has um, what are they called mandrills um, but in real life those are like baboons. Let me actually, you know, I have the map with me Because um, I have a map of the zoo which I'm going to use to take notes next time I'm there which is in two days um, but Let's see it is number 11. That is yeah baboons um, I'll actually Quickly open a, a Google. Oh actually the episodes almost done <laughs> so I should wrap up, but let's quickly translate. What is it called in English? It is a Hamadrias baboon. 
I'm not sure how I pronounce that, but <laughs> there you have it. So, that's it. All the monkeys are happy. Here's the only screenshot I really have. Um, in the next episode, if we get to building the monkey habitat, we will build. Uh, we will definitely have some more screenshots. But now, the only finished thing really is this bridge. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next episode, and goodbye.